Good morning once again. This is Heidi. Uh, I'd like to thank Nick Rotolo and Manisha. They both sent us these articles today about scientists implant human brain cells in mice to create a super mouse. Actually, this happened about a year ago in March of 2013 that scientists um, decided that they were going to try to implant these uh, fetal cells into the brain of a mouse and now it's a year later and they've come out with some reports of what has happened over this year. So scientists from the University of Rochester Medical Center in New York have created a super mouse. The new creation was designed by implanting human brain cells in a normal mouse. Why would a group of researchers venture into the realm of something that seems like a scene straight out of the Planet of the Apes? Researchers are hoping to better understand human brain diseases by studying them in living mouse brains. The hybrid brains retain a mouse's own neurons, which constitute about half of their brain cells, but almost all of their glial cells, which support the neur neurons, are human. Rochester's Steve Goldman told Andy Colon of the New Scientist, it's still a mouse brain, not a human brain but all the non-neuronal -neuro cells are human. Researchers took the immature glia cells from donated human feces, fetuses. Donated human fetuses. Now where do you get donated human fetuses? Do you just call up an abortion clinic and they donate? Does some college kid that he's teaching decide to donate her fetus? Do you personally get to sign over your fetus for scientific research, how do you get a donated human fetus? Well, all right. We'll leave that question to the ethicist, I guess. But they took donated human fetuses and inject them into mouse pups. The cells developed into star-shaped glial cells known as astrocytes. That's interesting that they're star-shaped. 300,000 human cells were injected into each mouse. But 12 months later, that number had increased to 12 million. The mouse's own glial cells had, had been driven out by the human astrocytes, which are up to 20 times larger than those in mice. Researchers have compared the project to ramping up the memory in your computer. What was the outcome? Researchers have found that the super mouse is much smarter than traditional mice. The study found a fourfold improvement in memory, in another experiment, Goldman's team found that when immature human glial cells were introduced into mouse pups that were defective in producing myelin, some of the human glial cells developed into oligodendrites. Those are the brain cells that play an active role in the formation of myelin. Researchers could use their findings to treat diseases of the brain, such as multiple sclerosis, where damage to the myelin sheath is implicated. The group is still facing ethical challenges as they continue to implant human brain cells into mice. Some groups have called the creation a Franken-mouse. The groups say that the super mouse is still just a mouse and not a human. So back in um, March of 2013 when they first did this, they were interviewed by um, National Public Radio. And so I've got a little excerpt of their interview back then. Um, where they were all excited about their new um, study. And it tells you a little bit more about this doctor, Dr. Goldman. Okay, Human glial cells, or human astrocytes, are much larger than those of the lower species, he says. They have more fibers, and they send those fibers out over greater distances. The thought is that maybe these glial cells have played a role in making humans smarter. So Goldman teamed up with his wife, Macon Nendergaard, who has her own Nendergaard lab out, running out of the University of Rochester to test this idea. They injected some human glial cells into the brains of newborn mice. The mice grew up and so did the human glial cells. The cells spread throughout the mice brain integrating perfectly with mouse neurons and in most areas outnumbering the mouse counterparts. All the while, Goldman says the glial cells maintained their human characteristics. They're very much, they very much thought that they were in the human brain in terms of how they developed and integrated, he said. So what are these mice like, the ones with brains full of functioning human cells? 
Their neural circuitry is still just the same, so they act completely normal. They still socialize with other mice and still seem interested in mousy things. But the researchers say that these mice are measurably smarter. In classic maze tests, they learn faster, they make many fewer errors, and it takes them less time to come to the appropriate answer, Goldman says. It might take a normal mouse four or five attempts to learn the correct route, for example, but a mouse with a human brain cells could get it on a second try. Glial cells, those boring glial cells, somehow enhance learning. In fact, they could be changing what it means to be a mouse, and that raises ethical questions for this kind of research. Maybe bioethicists have been a little bit too cavalier, assuming that a mouse with some human brain cells in it is just your normal old mouse, says Robert Steifer, a bioethicist from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Well, it's not going to be human, but that doesn't mean it's not a normal mouse either. Steifer says it's not just that these mice can get through a maze more quickly, they're better at recognizing things that scare them, and perception of fear is one of the things bioethicists must weigh when they decide the types of experiments you can do on an animal. So you have to sort of step back and do some hardcore philosophy, he says. Like, will these types of human-animal hybrids eventually get close enough to humanity that we would feel uncomfortable performing experiments on them? The researchers in this study say we're really, really far from that point. And if you want to investigate the role of glial cells, these hybrid mice are the best tools available. Wow. Let's take a look at this philosophy. These, if the philosophers in Madison, Wisconsin, and Rochester, University of Rochester, can take a look at it, why don't we take a look at it? Number one, let's start with the donated human fetuses. Again, I raise the question, how do you get a donated human fetus? That, to me, is the, uh, the whole crux of the unethic unethical part of this experiment. But that's my personal opinion, and there's plenty of people out there who don't agree with me. And there's, we're actually divided as a nation half and half about whether you should be using these fetal cells or not. Uh, obviously, these fetal cells got no proper burial. But the question here... And I saw one comment. It said, well, it really doesn't matter if you use the human fetal cells or not because your body is just your body and your soul is gone. But I don't think we know enough about the soul yet to just write it off as gone. We're finding out more and more, for instance, people who have had heart transplants are have, taking on the characteristics, likes, dislikes of the, the pe person whose heart that they've integrated into their body. That tells us a lot right there, is that things continue to live on even though the organ was removed from one person to the other person. Things that they could not know, things that fears, likes and dislikes of foods, likes and dislikes of lifestyles, a lot of things. And um, I, I heard Perry Stone do a real good study on um, that they just found a whole like neural center on the heart itself, which may explain some of these uh, phenomenons that are coming up. If we just found that within the last year or so, what might we find sometime in the glial cells? Who knows what these glial cells are carrying into these mice? Are they carrying thoughts and memories? Are, are, are there thoughts and memories going on in these mice heads of humans? How do we know that? We're not going to know that. Not in this experiment. And so what are we trying to prove by this experiment? Are we trying to improve memory? Because how really are you going to use this in the end? Are you, You're not going to extract these cells and put them into a human or make a medicine out of them? Are you? I don't know. That, that's pretty scary stuff to me. Um, and then the myelin sheaths. Myelin is kind of like the insulation you see around a wire. And these sheets, you know, like the plastic, black plastic you see around a wire, they, they come off in the disease of multiple sclerosis, which is a horrible, horrible disease. I've taken care of lots of people with it. So there's, they mentioned that um, perhaps the glial cells help in maintaining the myelin in a disease like multiple sclerosis, which is stripping the myelin off these, off these neurons. How are you going to take it out of a mouse and take it back to a human? 
that's a scary that's a scary and a bioethical thought to me as well so I, I don't know there's a lot of philosophy a lot of questions to be raised here or is there a more sinister act going on here uh, where are they getting the fetuses and why are they trying to change lower species as he puts it and mix it up with a higher species questions yet to be answered